This is Twit. At an almost superficial level, I mean, I'm, I'm already thinking, okay, uh, everybody that I Zoom with is not as geeky as I am, and I'm not that geeky, but um, I don't want to hit the 45-minute limit with, um, uh, with free Zoom. I know from talking to people at Zoom that they're vast and gigantic, but at the people talking to people level, you got something that looks better to me. And that strikes me as something that can be enormous. And, and not only um, just sort of in an overall sense, but also in the, boy, this would be great in all these different verticals, you know, education, customer support. You know, the um, it might be interesting with customer support to have you know, more than like the equivalent of a phone call or if you're calling Apple that they take over your, you know, they're looking at your screen or something like that. But it seems to me there are lots of possibilities here that are, um, that this opens up where that aren't, that aren't a Zoom session or Google, t um, Microsoft Teams or whatever. And I'm wondering if you're, if you're looking in that direction or wanted to go in that direction or if you're just more or less taking a step by step, we'll see where this goes approach. I, I am, I am giving a lot of thought to those directions, to those thoughts. I, I would love to carry this project forward. This project has been come, has, has kind of overtaken my life as a passion project, but I, I can't maintain it forever because it, it is actually more or less breaking even or at sometimes costing me money to, to continue to operate it and develop on it. Um, so I, I am hoping to find a way to uh, maybe offer managed hosting, um, more some of the lim limitations of OBS Ninja is since that it is peer to peer based. Once you start getting past seven to twenty people in a room, it starts getting harder and harder to optimize all the settings to have it work. And I, I am thinking that maybe offering a more managed service for those who are trying to do larger groups uh, would be the way I, I could may maybe spin this off as a, a premium side version. Uh, I, I don't know how that's going to go, but there is a, a, a very large demand from those who are trying to use this as a Zoom alternative or as a Cisco alternative. Um, so I, I am pursuing that. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to, how to take the best uh, first step in that direction, though. That is an interesting question because I think one of the toughest um, decision points all of us face that are developing anything is when when does something work best in a peer-to-peer -peer way and then when does it cross over into a more centralized thing? Uh, Brian Bellendorf, um, who's been on here uh, um, at least once, uh, not, not long ago, but who is famously one of the fathers of Apache, uh, talks about what he calls minimum viable centralization. But then how do you make decisions about that? What is minimum viable? What, what do you choose to operate on? Um, uh, and I think for a, a company, if you're going to start a company um, that does, say, managed hosting, um, you're doing it on AWS, or you're doing it on one of the other uh, clouds or CDNs or whatever it might be, and as we found out recently, that they could deplatform you too if you don't if if the wrong things happen on there. So there's yeah. a risk with that. And I'm wondering if you've thought much down in that direction, or maybe it's just like <laughs> to be avoided until you have to go there. Uh, I, the OBS Ninja project it will never will never change. You know the open uh, sort of peer to peer nature of this product, and so th I think there always will be that option. Um, I am a little bit concerned of the fact it kind of has like end to end encryption. And I know there's been some uh, that, that hasn't really been a, a, something that many governments love. Um, I, I do have people wanting to have the director's room and the production controls and the ease of use, but made accessible at a larger scale. And, and they don't really um, care so much about the peer to peer nature that they're more liking the functionality. And so f there might be two different audiences, um, two different markets. Uh, uh, that, that's how I was thinking about the problem, I, I suppose. 
I want to follow up on something that Doc said, uh, just to clarify. I mean, so obviously there's the, hey, I want to productize this for a uh, large scale um, for for maybe companies or or conferences or things like that. But then there's also, I mean, this is all based on open source and open standards. So could I take the URL that OBS Ninja gives me and plug it into a product that doesn't necessarily already have the capability to do uh, screen sharing, uh, you know, webcam sharing. And I'm thinking like, you know, video editors, like some of the open source video editors, and I, maybe maybe some of them already have this functionality, but it seems like it would be really easy to take um, uh, the same way that OBS does, right? To say, I want to create a browser source, uh, but I want to do it to record a little snippet of something I need while I'm editing my video. And then just use OBS Ninja as the way to to bring that content in. It seems like a really easy solution, especially for open source video editing products potentially. If you have a browser source, you can pretty much ingest OBS Ninja feeds. It'd be just a little website, but it would just look like a video element. And that that works with many applications. BBC has Brave, a, a little. Uh, open source video editor that they've designed that has a prototype web browser that, that would probably support this vmix obs uh, anything that has a uh, chromium embedded framework could probably do this uh, so th there's lots of applications out there that have that any sort of electron based uh, application so one of those hybrid desktop applications could probably embed this uh, while, while WebRTC is an open standard, OBS Ninja uh, does create its own little uh, API to communicate between the peers. WebRTC, WebRTC does not um, create that standard. It just creates uh, some, some required functions for the browser. And it's up to each individual to kind of d develop their own API to, to pass those functions and packets around.